Welcome to Colobox, one of the weirdest games you've ever played, but a way to earn a little bit of wax so that you can get some tool upgrades in Alien Worlds or even a little bit of passive income. I've been playing for a good little bit and I'm going to show you what I know, which I'm no expert, but I learned a little bit through some growing pains and I'll do my best to take you through that. So. Just as a little bit of information, Kolobox is a weird word and I wanted to look it up and it's actually from a Slavic fairy tale that has to do with a story sort of like the gingerbread man in the, the States. You know, there's actually a German version of it too. I don't know, it's kind of weird, but essentially what Kolobox are in this game are their pets and they're, well, they're creatures, entities, I don't know, spherical beings, I think is what they call it, but they're, they're placed as pixelated little creatures that you can collect that have their own stats and there's a ton of different things that you could do with them mainly breeding and putting them on adventures so what you do to buy cola box when you just log into the website for the first time which I'll have a link in the below it's not a you know a, a referral link or anything like that it's just a link to the website you can go to buy new you have to log in with your wax account and when you go to buy new you'll be brought to this page. Now, this is the simple market. It's kind of like the wax market that we played around with buying tools on for Alien Worlds, but it's a different version of it. And here you could buy cola box. If you scroll down, you'll see that there are a bunch of cola box that have the buy icon next to them uh, and also some black X's on some of them. These are dead cola box. Yes, you can buy cola box dead. Yes, you can revive them with wax. <laughs> I have I've never done it because it's usually expensive. And you can also buy live ones. And that's what we're after, like this one right here. So if you look on the left side of the screen and scroll down, you can filter by a bunch of different things. And one of the things that we want to select is 100 under health. And that's going to give us all healthy cola box. Now, you need at least two cola box to breed. But you only need one for, to go on adventure and the amount of wax that you'd spend to get into any of these cola box is very very modest so i would recommend spending just enough to get you started to see how um and and just to start breeding and you can move up as fast as you want after that so you're looking at a probably a starting investment of about 40 cents worth of wax not real hard to do you could probably click mine one time in alien worlds and get that if you needed to so what you need to do is you can you come over to this site and grab you a couple of cola box. I'm going to buy one just to show you what it looks like. Actually, I think that one was 25 cents. I'm just going to buy one for 20 cents, okay? It's 0.78 wax, which is not too much to spend on a video to show you guys how the process looks. I've been having some weird stuff going on with my browser, so I'm using another browser now, but it's basically, actually, I just saw one that the price went down, so it actually kind of worked out in my favor. So you go ahead and you approve the transaction, you prove that you're not a robot, you hit approve, and you get the cola box that's added to your inventory. So this is the cola box that we just bought and you can see that it is resting for six days, 12 hours and 27 minutes. So this is, there's some sites out there that you can kind of see the stats on these things, but by default, you don't really know what you're going to get. So they sent out this thing to either breed or to do something, do an adventure and it's, it's, it's going to be resting for quite a bit of days. So you can't breed with it until this refresh timer is up and you can't send it on events until this refresh timer is up, which is another reason that you may want to get a <laughs> quite a few pairs to start. But you can always wait as long as you're patient, you can get that. And then once you have your own breeders, you don't have to buy worry about buying them anymore if you don't want to. In the same breath, you can even breed these guys and then sell them after that, just like you, they did to us. <laughs> and you can just keep buying and selling cola box like that. So not to get off on a tangent here, you'll see a bunch of different stats on these guys. You've got their age, what generation they come from, how many kids they're part of, uh, the speed and the stealth are the two big factors for these. And you can even rename them as well. So uh, on their experience, you'll see there's a little icon under some of them, like the one that we just bought actually had a few icons underneath. So these are the adventures that they have successfully completed. 
So taking that into consideration, they have a little bit of experience and chew and can actually perform better on the main. They have a little bit of experience and they can perform better on the adventures that you put them on when they've already completed them successfully. So let me just show you how this works. First of all, we're going to go to breeding. Breeding is as simple as it can be. You click breed on one color block and you hit breed on another one. I wish I had some information to give to you on how breeding works in order to get better stats or whatever. Honestly, guys, I don't know. I haven't dug into that. And to tell you the truth, I've been just doing large numbers. <laughs> I've just been doing volume. I click a lot of buttons. I set it. I forget it. And I come back later and I check on my breeds and my adventures. Okay, so we can name it anything. I, you know, you can give it nice pet names if you want to. I've just been naming it numbers. For the case of argument, we're going to call it Squatty because the Z Squad, right? So let's click breed and is going to verify the transaction. We go ahead and do that. And now when we go to breeding, well, breeding has started successfully. So now when we go to breeding, it's going to show that Squatty is basically breeding, right? Um, now you have a few different things to look at on this sheet parents owner time until born how many wax to fast forward this breeding <laughs> and breeding enhancers which there are some things that you can get in the the shop or buying them with k bucks and actually giving percent chances for it to survive or fail or there's a bunch of other things that you could do but breeding enhancers 40% success if fail Kolobok will be born dead. So there's a 60% chance that your Kolobok will actually die. The parents don't die, only the offspring, okay? So if it's dead, it goes into your claimed spot right here, just like if it would if it would die on an adventure, which I haven't showed you yet. But if we go to claim, you'll see that I have a number of Kolobok that have been born, dead, <laughs> and and born alive as well as a couple of prizes. Now, these are the type of prizes that you get when you send Cola Box on adventures. They're NFTs that you can sell on the exchange or you can stake them for Aether on our planet, which you can trade in for wax currency. It's a couple of different ways that you can get them and epics tend to pay out relatively well. I'm gonna show you that. So. Let's show, let me show you the adventure screens so first. So this is what it looks like when you have finished adventures. And this top one that's still moving is what it looks like when you still have an adventure going. The reason why it took so long to record this video too is that I was actually waiting for things to line up to where they wouldn't all be dead. Some would be alive. I'd have prizes to show. I was trying to show all aspects of the game. So anyway, right now you can see on this adventure that isn't finished, the name of the cola box that's on it, the speed, <laughs> its stat in stealth as speed, and the risk that it runs for dying on this adventure. Now, this doesn't look like a real good percentage, and it's not. But if you're breeding as fast as I am with as many cola box as you are, and you look at stats when you start putting them into adventures, you'll notice that some stats even with decent stats, the, the the rate of success isn't really that dramatically better. So I kind of just send whatever now. I usually actually aim for lower stats unless the percentages work out real well. I'll show you how to set that up in a moment. First, let's click the all close all finished games. And it can show when it's when you're actually finished, it shows what you've won or if the cola block died in all of this. Now I have some free adventure slots open. So you can go back to your my cola box and put them on adventures, right? We'll go to, let's see, this guy has 100 in speed, but 49 stealth. And I'll show you the difference between that. Let's look at this one. This one has a low stealth, and I'll compare it to somebody that has a high stealth. So reasonable speed with stealth. If we go to adventures here, it'll give me the drop down of what I could pick. Granny and Grandpa are the easiest adventures that you can undertake. Rabbit is the second most difficult, Wolf, Bear, and then Fox in that order. And you can see the stats change for the prize pools. So right now, this prizes is a 98% chance to get the first prize slot, which I think is maybe even nothing. 
<laughs> I'm not really I'm not really sure about what prize slots of what I think it tells you a little bit more on the website but um, I think it's the common percentage then uncommon then rare and then epic for prizes is actually what I think it is so if we go to rabbit you'll see that it's still 80% for common but 10% instead of the previous 2% for uncommon 2% for rare instead but still no chance of getting the epic and so on and so forth all the way to Fox which has a 0% chance to give you a common 2% chance for uncommon 10% chance for actually is that an 8 yeah that's an 18% chance to get a rare and an 80% chance to get an epic but look at the risk look at the risk 68% chance that this Kolobok will be lost okay now this is on a Kolobok with a relatively low stealth stat which kind of decides how their survivability works right so if we go back to my cola box let's check out a guy with a closer to max stat so this is actually a 0.98 stealth okay so if we go to adventures with this guy and we select fox you'll see that it's a 56 percent chance now this is one of the best stats that you can get in stealth. The max stealth stat you can get is 100. I don't know what it is for speed, but it goes pretty high. Stealth determines its survivability. Speed determines how fast it can complete an adventure. So if you have a very stealthy and very speedy uh, Kolobok and you want to run wolf runs, which run a much, much, much lower risk level, 17.62, you still have a reasonable chance to get a decent amount of prizes with this right so what I would suggest doing is calculating your own risk based on what you have available if you have a lot of cola box send them to foxes man <laughs> you know try to get some epics because when you go to the claim section again after completing those adventures you're gonna have all of these cola box and your prizes to claim let's go ahead and claim these and I'm gonna show you what they look like when staking so this is all of my staked cola box that I have and in total it adds up. I got all of these just by getting a couple of breeder pairs for a few cents guys and breeding and breeding and breeding and sending on adventures for the last few weeks and this is what I've developed. It turns out that this is about 45 aether per hour, 45.6 aether per hour is what this goes for on our planet staking. If you take, and it was higher, it was recently nerfed, it's still good. If you look at it, Aether per hour, per day now, that's the total is about 1094, which is the equivalent of about one wax, 0.984 for this current trade level, right? So right now I'm getting one wax a day, just with just by staking. That's not considered any K bucks that I earn or any new prizes or any of that stuff. It's one extra wax a day, which I showed you on the last video. One wax is enough to buy two shovels right now. You know, you can you can accumulate it as you go. You can buy more NFTs with it. You can trade those or sell those for profit. There's a ton of different things you could do with it. But we're going to stake the ones that we had just picked up. So if I go to unstaked and refresh, you'll see that these are the two that I got now. This is this is like eight aether per hour just from running those missions. Now, did it take me a whole day or two to actually get all of those missions done? Yeah, it takes a little while, but again, I only spent a couple of wax to get all of this started, and then I just started rolling. Now, you can expand your operation as much as you want to. Sometimes it fails to send and you have to click it again, but you can expand that as much as you want to, but now I'm getting eight aether per hour more. So that adds up. If we go to the sheet again, it's like 53.6, right? So it just keeps going up and up and up. And after a little while, if you get 100 Aether per hour, after just a few, you know, more days of this, possibly a week or two, you end up getting a good little bit and you can scale it as much as you like. So it does cost to scale a little bit. If we go to adventures, you'll notice that I have five slots here all together. Now, you get your first slot for free. If you want your second slot, it costs one wax. If you want your third slot, it costs two wax. If you want your fourth slot, it costs four. If you want your fifth slot, it costs eight. And if I buy a slot right now, it would cost 16. 
I'm pretty comfortable with five slots based on what I have right now. But starting adventures is quite easily as well. All you do is click start adventure. You pick one of your cola box. Again, if you want speed, you pick speed. If you want survivability, you pick stealth. If you have something that does both, great. This guy has been through the rabbit quest successfully and the wolf quest successfully. If we click adventures on him and select the wolf quest, you'll see that it's like a 17 point six two percent chance now sometimes i'm a little bit if i know that i have a good cola buck, like this one's a really good cola buck sometimes i'll do wolf runs with these sometimes i'll do bear runs and i'm not quick to throw them to foxes because even though 56 is much better than 64 or whatever it's still a 50 percent chance to lose this decent cola box so i'm gonna go ahead and run it on the wolf and we're gonna start that adventure it's gonna prompt you like it always does to make any transaction on the blockchain a lot of people have been asking, how are you doing this without that much of a capture? And there's a couple different ways you could do it. I use Google Chrome or you can use um, Brave browser or another browser as long as you enable all cookies. So if you use Brave and you enable all cookies, it's easy and it won't give you all of the crazy captures or it won't do it as aggressively. At least. So you can enter Colabach IDs to find family trees. You can go into bounties, which I really don't understand this system much. You can go into stats and look at all of the different other players that are breeding cola box as well. And you can check out and do all sorts of stuff with stat viewing on this. You can actually put them on the market just as easily as well through trading and sell your cola box back just like we bought them in uh, the first place. But that is going to be it for this tutorial. I hope you get a few whacks from this. Tell me if you have any information in the comments about some things that I didn't leave in the video for the other viewers and join our Discord. We do have a Cola Box channel as well as a bunch of other wax games and a very, very lit lively community with a bunch of different things going on in Discord. So come meet us over there. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. As always, this is Zuljan signing off. We'll see you next time.